Well, my name is Rick McFadden, and today is November 13th, 2017. I'm with Don Whipple in Arvada, Colorado, and we are going to talk about his Marine Corps experience. So, Don, why don't you tell us about your early life? Well, I came on the scene here in western Kansas, out in the prairies there during the years just prior to the, uh, the Great Depression. And I came from a large family. My mother and her husband had one son, and during World War I he was killed. And and my father and his uh, wife had seven, ch uh, five children, and uh, she died with the flu during World War One. And then my dad and mother, she came to teach at a little country grade school there, and he was on the school board, and they got acquainted and decided this is the Lord's path for them, and they got married and had seven more children, and so that made thirteen of us. Ah. People often say, how big a family did you have? I say, well, there's four girls, and each girl had nine brothers. <laughs> and people would say, oh, 36? And I'd say, no, you had to do your math better than that. They all had the same children, had same sisters <laughs> and brothers. And so uh, made it 13 of us. And so we had a great, day, a great time growing up. It was a fun time living on a ranch and farm and a great family. And... So what's your birthday? August the 31st, 1925. 1925. And uh, we lived on an old hilltop out there in western Kansas, didn't have a tree, and it was windswept, and I have a picture of the old house, and it looks all weather-beaten because of those dust storms. We lived right in the Dust Bowl, which was right north of Dodge City, Kansas. And uh, that dust would just beat the paint right off of that house, and it, <laughs> that's what we, uh, we inherited the first years of my life. We went to a little country grade school, and uh, we saw that if it came time to let out school, and uh, parents started calling on the phone and said, don't leave the schoolhouse. We'll pick you up. And so we, there's a cloud coming up in the north that we have no idea what it is, or there's something coming from the north. So we all went to the windows after school and looked out there near in the northern horizon. Because you can see 100 miles practically in Kansas <laughs> out there. You know how sure. flat that is. And <clears throat> there, there was a little black rolling rim of something real black. We had no idea what it was, never seen anything like it. In fact, some people even thought it was the end of the world. Mm. And it kept rolling and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and just start raising thicker on the horizon. And then about six o'clock it hit. And it was just, that rolling dust was just like a big old steamroller just mm. coming. And it was black and fierce looking. And Parents begin to come after their kids, and they'd stand around and talk with one another and wonder, what in the world's happening over there? Because there'd never been anything like that before that any of us had ever seen. And then about 6.30 or 7, it just turned pitch dark when that thing got up over us, and, and it just turned from light to dark, about 6.30 or so or 7. and. Uh, I had a brother out in the field working, and he came in about 7 o'clock, and he had been out in the field working, and he stopped his tractor and got off and walked to the house, and he got a hold of a barbed wire fence to kind of keep him in track because he had no idea where he was going, and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And that barbed wire fence cut his hands all up as he was hanging on to that mm. to try to not let loose to get lost out there in that darkness. And uh, animals were coming out of that stuff, rabbits and wild animals were coming out of there, and coyotes and all the rest, coming ahead of that, because they had never seen anything like that either, and they scared the animals sure. and everything. So. 
So then it blowed all night, and and uh, my mother put wet cloths on her face about every ten minutes because it was sifting in her house, mm -hmm. and uh, the window sills the next morning had about an inch of dirt on them, just like powder, fine dirt like powder, and on the tabletop and all of that, and. The fence rows where there were weeds that rolled over. There was old tumbleweeds that rolled in there. In a couple of days, that thing rode for about three days like that. And by the third day, those fence rows were all piled up with dirt, like snow a bank. With a snow bank in there, only this was right. a dirt bank. Caught in those tumbleweeds. And, and uh, after that, we kept them burned out of there because that dirt you just couldn't get out of there once it was in there and you had wet barbed wire in there these fences and it just caught in those tumbleweeds and just hung there and started piling up. You could fall, walk right over the fence just for the dirt, just wired over the top. It piled up to that much. And so uh, the wind wasn't blowing hard, it was all up above pretty much. and. Uh, the next day, then the wind went down. I mean, the wind uh, came up more, and it it just became a dirty place everywhere. Just a, it was down on the ground, blowing hard, and and it was a lighter color. It didn't. It wasn't as dark as it was that way. But it blew like that for about three days, and that was the worst dust storm we ever experienced. But they were they came pretty regular after that for a while, and my. Dad had planted his wheat and the other farmers, and and that dirt coming in was just like a razor cutting off that wheat, just cut it right off at the ground, mm. that grains of dirt. And the fields were just swept clean down to the hard surface, and the, you know there's a hard plate about four or five six inches down, and and when people would farm, they would usually farmed down to that hard plate. And that dust all blew off of that hard plate. And, and my brother and I, we, uh, my dad had to get another job because he had all those children and we had a loan on our land and our cattle and all that stuff. Had to borrow money to get by through those no wheat <coughs> years when we didn't have a harvest. And uh, so my dad had to get another job. They were building roads and he got a job with a horse and with a team of horses and a wagon hauling dirt. They didn't have dump trucks and they had dump wagons. Mm -hmm. And he would, uh, they'd fill this wagon with dirt out of a, an elevator they pulled, pulled with horses as well. A dirt elevator and they'd, they would come along and kind of cut a furrow in the fields out there and they was building this road across there and and then it had a canvas uh, that, that would, uh, the dirt would come onto it and then he'd elevate it up on the box this, into this wagon box. And then he'd haul it over to the fill where they were going to fill in for a bridge or uh, something like that. And that's what he was doing. So he would have us go out and farm with the tractor and we were, I was nine and my brother was eleven, I think, something like that. And uh, we, uh, he would crank the tractor in the morning for us. We were too little to crank it, and he'd fill it with gas. And then at noon, we wouldn't shut it off. We would just, my mom would bring the gas out in the car to the field in five-gallon cans, and we'd put more in it to last us through the rest of the day. And then for us to shift the gear, the clutch was so hard, the spring was so hard, we would have to grab onto the steering wheel, one of us. We were just little guys. <laughs> and rear back like that to put the clutch in far enough, and then we couldn't reach the the gear shift. So both of us had to ride that tractor, one to push it on the clutch and hang onto the steering wheel and push it on the clutch, the other one to shift the gears over here. And then we would sit on the fender and just ride along, and as we rode along, we could that ground was just swept as clean as a piece of concrete, and you could see arrowheads and bullets out there by the scores. Huh. And we would jump off and gather those up in front of the plow and 
And uh, that night we would have practically a pick sack full of them. Just beautiful big arrowhead spearheads like that, that big really? out of flint. And uh, they were just in perfect shape and arrowheads the same. And bullets from every caliber and from Civil War days on back and buffalo hunting days out there, they would, those old bullets they used to hunt right. buffaloes out there in those fields in Kansas. And we had a real collection of that stuff. And so uh, I started driving about about six years old, really. I uh, my dad would go to the field, and and uh, or one of my older brothers would go to the field, and they would drive out there in a pickup, and then they would take the machinery and move on to another field, and then. They needed somebody to bring the pickup so we'd have some way to get back. So one of us little kids would drive that pickup right behind the machinery at about five miles an hour. But uh, we would just drive it there up and had to set up with both feet in the seat kind of to get to see over there. But, so we started driving at about six years of age. And <laughs> Jay. It was a fun time growing up out there. So how long was it before you were able to recover? from that dust storm? Oh, it was uh, years. And the war helped us to recover because uh, we didn't get any rain. My, the rainstorms would blow up and had these fierce lightning and thunderstorms out in western Kansas. Boy, the cracks of thunder would crack and the lightning would flash down to the ground and, and it was fierce to be out there and that mm. stuff. But uh, we uh, didn't just didn't get any rain and so my dad would stand out there and watch those clouds, I remember, and the wind would just blow them over. <coughs> Excuse me. The wind would just blow those clouds of rain over, just bypass us and go right on over. And I saw my dad stand up there watching and big old tears running down his cheeks. Oh. Thinking, man, a life, I don't know what I'm going to do it's if I don't get rain. Yeah. Our crops will die and our, our grass wasn't growing like it should for the cattle to feed on and they were getting skinny. and and the uh, dams were all drying up and a lot of these pastures we had, we had a large group of cattle in the pastures and they they would water through the dams, that's what they watered with and, and uh, many of those old cows can get out in that dam and walk out in that deep mud that when the dams dried up that water just kept soaking in there and they'd, they'd sink into their knees and they'd get caught out there and we'd have to go out and rope them with a horse and a lariat rope and drag them out of there and because uh, they couldn't make it out by themselves. Right. And some of them would lay down and they were so weak they couldn't get up by themselves so we'd have to take them by the tail and just help them get up. Gee. It was a tough time, you know, and you see them, they'd die every once in a while, one of them would die on us. and Then we got a TB uh, germ going through our herd and the government uh, would come out and test you, and if you had tested a cow with TV, well, you had to shoot them. And man, I remember we were out there shooting those cows that were once mm. just beautiful animals, and it had TB and tested for TB, and and so it was a it was a terrible time to to be farming. So we would farm in that old dust, and the, we'd be out on that old tractor, and the dust would be so thick. We could hardly see where we were going in that field, and uh, we were just little guys driving those old big tractors, and and so it was an experience indeed growing up. And come harvest, there wouldn't be any harvest, and we'd have to borrow more money and mortgage more cattle, and it was just a tough time. Dad had this big, we had my mom and dad had this big family, and these. Uh, these the cattle all mortgaged and the, the old banker would pull in our yard someday and all of us would stand there at the door and wonder if he's out to foreclose on us you know mm -hmm. that was a that was a thing we would be wondering about if, wow uh, it was just a sad time of, of getting along how we made it i don't know how my dad ever raised a family like that and made it through those years excuse me a lot of folks uh picked up a lot of Arkansas years, you know, the Arkansas 
beat the path up to California. You heard right. about the Arkers, Arkansas. Going out of, not a Kansas farmers, moved out and sold out. And I remember I was in the first grade with another boy, Raymond DeMent was his name. And he was in my grade and he was moving away and I just thought, what a sad thing to have to move. And I just remember crying like a little baby when Raymond DeMint moved to, out to Colorado and they kept moving on west and I just thought, what a terrible thing would it be to move away from all your friends and sure. whatnot. But I never saw Raymond again after that. I understand he moved to Colorado Springs and lived in the Colorado lived in Colorado Springs, huh. but I never got a chance to talk to him or anything. But we were just the best of buddies. And so then uh, we would uh, we would get jobs with other farmers of of uh, running their tractor or. Some farmers, rather than work in their fields anymore, they would call what they called summer fowl. They would, they would work the ground to kill the weeds, and then if we would get 